started with my dad. He played on, uh, played 39, 40, 41 football team here at Jolly Catholic with a very famous Jolly Catholic alum, Tippy Madrick, was his teammate. Uh, it goes back to the De La Salle days, uh, where my great uncles well, went to De La Salle, started De La Salle. They played uh, sports at De La Salle, played football at De La Salle. All the way through to uh, my son Luke, who's a sophomore here at Jolly Catholic. Well, I knew it was going to be hard, right? Football is hard. Um, but ever since I could walk, I feel like I always wanted to play football at Jolay Catholic, so I had to give it a shot. Um, and all my friends were playing, and, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was as, as fun as it was hard. Um, and uh, basically just getting to play freshman football at Jolay Catholic was, was an honor, uh, if I'm being honest. I, you know, we. We, we never thought of it as a chore or a task or it was too hard. It was just how competitive can we be with one another. And that was the kind of group we had. We were so competitive with one another. You know, but there was no doubt from the time that I was a, a little boy that I was going to be, you know, wearing the, the brown and white one day. And uh, we had a lot of tradition here at, at Joy Catholic and they, you know, they love their experience so much that that's pretty much all I heard about growing up. And, and um, I couldn't wait to, to one day be a part of that. But I remember Growing up, uh, my brothers would play. We would watch the old VHS tapes of the 87 championship game, the 90 state championship game, the 92 runner-up. We would watch those tapes and um, just had a lot of fun doing it. So, you know, certainly my goal was always to win a state championship. You go to Joy Catholic and, and you were expected to be at that level and play at that level. I was like, honestly, I was like a little nervous because I was like, I didn't know like if it would be if I would fit in and like be good enough because like I said, I started playing football in eighth grade. When I first got here, I was blown away in terms of how much work I had to do to be on the level of the guys that I saw that were seniors like Brandon Geis and Connor Krish, Tyler Huditz. I think that practices are is what sets the tone for you know the legacy of Jolly Catholic. I think that from day one there's expectations coming into practice, and that being a freshman, you don't really know those expectations, but you know it's something bigger than what you thought. It was like a playground area up north, a couple of miles, because we used to have to run there. That first two to three weeks of freshman football at Jolie Catholic was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. Doing the exercise of the captain's practice and then going to the two-a-day sessions at Jolie Catholic. We would walk, rarely. We had a bus, but it rarely started. But we would walk from Jefferson Street, either to Fergus or Garnsey Park for practice. The practices of Gordy were, to me, unbelievable. I mean, back then we were, we were platooning, we never crossed the line. No one ever crossed, I mean, even Tom Thayer or Dave Matichek ever crossed the line. They all stayed in offense and Larry and I had the defense. And no one ever stood around at practice. From the beginning to the end, people were working. Practices were long, uh, especially when, when Coach Gillespie was there. We had long, long practices. You've probably heard the stories about when you get into the playoffs where the parents would pull out their cars and turn their headlights on so that we could practice out there. I'm sure you've heard all those stories. So that was part of that. Go! Now you see how that's going to be able to seal this. 
We all drink out of the same water cooler. We all use the same ladle. Nobody got sick. You know, we didn't worry about people spraying water into our mouths or anything like that. So times were different back in the 60s. 50 guys, you know, changing in the middle of a parking lot to go out to the field, you know, practice on the patches of grass around the stadium field so we can keep the stadium grass, you know, kind of fresh for the games. You know, we went full speed pretty much every day, all the time. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Good pack, good. On the football field, the practice field, you did the same thing. Coach, coach told you to do something, and, and the boys did it. And, and they worked hard. I mean, we worked hard each and every day, and uh, their success actually showed their hard work and their discipline. So. Working with him, you were fired up every day. He got you fired up every day. They are afraid of nothing. On a football field, I think it makes a difference when it's fourth and one. You know, whether we're going to stop or whether we're going to go in. I think that is the difference. or something that we can reach down for. Coach takes his team out to practice in weather like this. Gillespie knows the game may be played under similar conditions, and it's best to get used to them. Now, the quarterback, Rudolph. When they had the hall, for, he was in a first class of the Hall of Fame inductees yeah. and I had a chance to go over and speak with him briefly uh, just before he left and the only thing Coach Gillespie looked at, he grabbed my hand and he said, keep coaching. Just, um, he, had just, I mean, he had such a way of grabbing your attention and making you feel like you were you know, on top of the world. I, Coach Sharp is one of my favorite people in the world. He's, uh, um, you know, he's a coach. He's a mentor, he's a friend, um, he's just a guy that, that you want to be around, you want to listen to him talk. Every play is a touchdown, I mean, uh, you know, if it's blocked right, if it's done right, every play could be a score, every play should be a score. Um, you know, we heard that one a million times. You know, pushing yourself to the limit, um, Francis and, and the group there were just incredible coaches and mentors and would drive you harder than you thought you could be driven. They, uh, uh, they create an environment where you just push each other to get better, um, and uh, and it was great. It was one of those things that I don't I don't know that other teams have that. I don't know that other programs have that. It's, it's, it's so many people that I look up to because, like I said, all everyone that has been here has helped me so much. And uh, one of the guys that I didn't mention, like uh, Coach Mack, he was my D line coach, and Coach Kinsella. They both they both helped me so much. Like. When they, I'd have to I'd be a tie between Sharp and Jaws. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with Jaws because he was, um, you know, quality control for the offense at the time. And obviously Sharp was the coordinator and the head guy. And so I spent a lot of time with those guys. And actually Jaws was my sophomore coach. They don't give up on you. I think each and every coach here that um, are here for the right reasons, it's, um, they enjoy coaching football and at a high level. And I think you get in with, get into the program with them, so you're always given 200 percent effort. Everyone, like the whole organization, they all like helped me and made me become the man I am today. distinct memory of, you know, sitting in Joy Memorial Stadium with a hot chocolate sitting next to my dad, watching these guys come out with this victory light on the side of their helmet thinking, you know, when do I get a chance to do that? Yeah. Going into a game in high school. A strong desire to perform. 
and to uphold the legacy that was laid before me, especially coming after that state championship team. I think my favorite memory would be we, we beat Marmion. That had to have been uh, the biggest game for us. We were tied for first, and uh, uh, we ended up beating them. I think the score was 19-13. There was some great players on that team. I was a sophomore on the varsity. Uh, that was a, a great memory as a player. Uh, I remember us beating Carmel of Mundelein for the, for the championship of the division we won. I think it was 26-20. We defeated Rockford Boylan, I think it was 1975, maybe 1976 in the playoffs. Great game, eight to seven. We stopped them at the two yard line at the end of the game to win. And then we went on to win the state championship. That game was in the semifinals. Yelling two, two, two. Phelps over the tailback. Here's Pesavetto, he's gonna try and run. Pass into the end zone, good to Mackey. They all want to Mackey, was all alone. Tim Mackey, I think it was, and he is embraced by Dennis Hennessy. This place is going crazy. Tim Mackey was all alone in the right-hand corner of the end zone, and Pesavano delivered the ball. The Hilltoppers go crazy, and Rockford Boylan is stunned. It's going to happen. We, we had to make it. We were almost benefited from them getting to the five-yard line and having that short field to work with because they were so used to throwing the ball 30 yards outfield. We were big down there. There weren't a lot of room for those guys to run. So we got down to the five yard line. They missed the pass to the receiver, Satone Powers, in the first play. That was a walk in touchdown. The second play, I believe it was an incomplete pass. I could be wrong. I think it was an incomplete pass. The third play, I actually got some pressure up the middle and made Brasic uh, scramble. And Minerich actually had to come up and make the play to tackle him at the one. And the clock was running, and I'll never forget this because all of us at this age, we never been in a spot like this. We knew the ball was getting out, so we literally stood up and we saw the ball go, and I couldn't see anything over there. I mean, it was the longest second ever. He snapped that ball, and I saw Miners dive, and how he made that play, I will never know. Oh my God! A tremendous defensive play out there. Chris Minerich in the end zone knocked it away. The Julian Catholic Hilltoppers will move on to the state semifinals. Can you believe this finish? Take another look. Brasic with no time on the clock throws the ball to the intended George. And what a play, number nine, Chris Minerich. Oh my lord, the play of the game. I'll tell you, that was the. Man. That whatever we did, we were very competitive little boys. You know, getting over being tired, hurting, losing, or an injury, whatever it might be, there's no quit. You know it's something bigger than what you thought. And I think that for me it was it was great because from the first minute that we started practice that it was give give it your all because that's what you saw, and you saw that from the varsity practices to sophomore and freshman, that people were there for a reason, and the reason is to win and to win championships. I remember I broke my nose at one point and had to have a nose or you know, a mask or whatever on it. Nobody else ever had one. It was like a strange thing. The real, the real aspect of that is the journey to get there and the memories that you make along the way. Of having the expectation to win, but also having a chip on our shoulder that we needed to get it done. Um, and uh, so that really drove us. You know, we, we kind of felt like the underdog. People were counting Julia Catholic out. Um, you know, could we really climb that mountain? Uh, one goes back to the 1981 state championship game when uh, Deerfield missed the field goal. And the whole, there's always pictures of it. You see all the guys coaching the sidelines that he missed it. So that was kind of a, a cool thing. Uh, Incredible, hostile atmosphere, hostile environment. Um, both teams absolutely hated each other. Um, and really a big, big tilt, right? So you have, you have probably two of the best teams in the state going at it. Uh, and it lived up to every expectation. I, you know, in the trenches, um, 
you know, great line play, uh, real tough kind of smash mouth football game. Um, you know, fans cheering against you. Uh, you know, as many fans from Morris there than there were from Joe A. Catholic. Uh, it was incredible. It was an incredible environment and a, a game I'll remember for the rest of my life. Leave. Yeah. Exhausted. Thanks, exhausted. Man. I've never been more physically exhausted in my entire life. Game. Our season's over. Um, and uh, I remember in the huddle, you know, talking with the guys, who's going to jump, who's going to jump, who's going to drive the line. Um, and they snap the ball, and you just give everything you possibly got at a rush or a jump or something. And watching that ball as you look back fall short of the goalpost, incredible feeling, incredible feeling. Just elation, running over to the sidelines, jumping on top of people. Um, it was it was one of the better moments we had at Julie Catholic. We would have done anything for each other. And to get where we were, I mean, we were at the peak. I, I, I think it's safe to say that we we climbed the mountain and we were on top for three years. I mean, we were, we were here at the best time. I truly believe that. Ultimately, you, you win the state championship and there's a, there's a, a great sense of accomplishment and, and you know, you're, you're overcome with a bit of emotion. That journey's over and you're ready to start another one. You know, the new dream starts to begin and I think that's what kind of makes Julia Catholic special is um, you, you know that, hey, we've got this window to celebrate and have a good time and, and you know, we'll, we'll have our, uh, our rally and, and all that stuff. We'll put the banner up. We'll get our rings. That's going to be fantastic and memories that we don't forget watching the highlight tape you made. I, I'll never forget that my, my sophomore season and then getting the ring and, and the, the accomplishment that I felt then. But we were already, the, the, the dream was already started for the next year. And pulling back into to, to Joliet Catholic, the old school, the victory light was on, and we'd all cheer that the victory light was on, and we'd sing the school song, and you know there was so much camaraderie. I think mean, that was the biggest thing at the end. Last year, literally, was you know before even the turn the light out became a thing, it was don't let turn the light off. To be part of a dynasty, and to be part of hey Joliet Catholic is the place to be. I, I mean, it was special. But that's the hardest thing I've done in my life. Mm -hmm. And it made me a, it made me a better man. Jolly Cat, the kids are a family, okay? And they live for each other, where a lot of kids are just out there for themselves, not here at this school. Um, they don't understand it, but you know it's it's something that it'll never die within within me. The 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 things that were instilled in me, the the, the camaraderie, um, you know, all that stuff is is something that I'll hold on to and and, and reflect back to um, as much as I possibly can. So Lou Holtz says this about Notre Dame, and I feel the same way about Julia Catholic. Lou Holtz will say, "If you're Notre Dame, no explanation needed. If you're not, no explanation will suffice." I feel the exact same way about Jolly Catholic. I think more than anything is I think it taught us all to like to be champions and, and what I mean by that is like it was just a mindset. Um, there was not one time where I was stepped on a football field here where I didn't think we were going to win the game. Togethers with the other parents and so on and so forth that made it a wonderful, wonderful time. It wasn't about that. It wasn't about what we did as individuals. It was about the team and winning. And and we were able to bring it home. And I the camaraderie and the friendships you develop, that's the things you take with you forever. It's not the trophies or the medals or the accolades, it's that friendships that last forever. And these guys have a great start on long friendship. Once you're part of Jolly Catholic football, you're part of it for the rest of your life. friends and families of our Julia Catholic football program, I'd like to extend a hand of gratitude to all who have made the first hundred years of Hilltopper football a century of excellence. Tireless work ethic, perseverance, accountability, and what it means to be a great teammate. We are a program built on family, 
Our success has always relied on the team, not individuals. All players committed to a team approach, each doing their part to the best of their abilities. Each player working side by side for something greater than himself. We were taught these lessons of life through the game of football and our coaches, which has helped develop us into the men we are today. Our experiences as part of this program are second to none. Nothing compares to wearing the brown and white. Regardless of the results on the field, we are all champions in life. Thank you to all. Go Hill. Incident. Guys, tell me about the prayer. Does it get you guys, Fire Father Ray's in the middle of the huddle, giving you that prayer? Oh, the prayer definitely gets me fired up before the game. Uh, Father Ray gets us all going, keeps us humble with the prayer, but also gets us excited for the game. We are here! 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 We are here!